I thought I told him to spray it with water to retain moisture before applying the film. You can't treat a glaze lily like a cactus. If Sanjay does this again, the loss will have to come out of his food expenses. Uh, I'll go talk to him. At this rate, he won't even be able to afford eating cacti for much longer. Hey, Tainari! Oh, <laughs> it's you two. It's been a while. What brings you to Port Ormos? We didn't have anything to do, and this place looked pretty lively, so we decided to stop by. But, uh, what's with all the flowers around here? Well, Port Ormos is currently organizing a flower exhibition featuring flowers and plants from all over Tevat, so I came to help out. The exhibition includes flowers from every corner of the world, each with their own unique properties and needs. With that in mind, the curator commissioned a flower pot from Kisharuar capable of retaining heat and moisture. Even so, an expert is still required to develop tailored transportation and care plans for each type of flower. Oh, and that expert is you, right? Not this time, no. I'm just here to help out. The expert in charge is someone else. Mr. Tainari! Sanjay! He, uh... He confused the poisonous bulbs with garlic shoots, and he ate them! Uh, never mind. Forget about what I said about the food expenses. Apologies, Traveler, Paimon. Looks like I've got something to take care of. I'll be back in just a moment. Tainari's busy no matter where he is, huh? Yeah, seems like it. Hey, don't look at Paimon like that! Paimon is super careful about what she eats. Well, looks like Tainari might be busy for a while. Let's take a look around the port in the meantime. Rainbow roses, glaze lilies, and Cecilia's? No wonder. It's... it's getting worse. Why? Look <laughs> you! your time, you two? If it's not too much trouble, perhaps you could try this incense. From your attire, I imagine you two aren't from Sumeru either. Seeing as we're both travelers from abroad, it's only right that we help each other out should the occasion arise. Oh, so you're here for the flower exhibition too? Hmm, I suppose that's accurate. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Emily, a perfumer from Fontaine. Paimon is Paimon! Thank you so much for your help just now. Oh, and this is... The Traveler, right? I've heard a lot about you from this Steambird. 
It's nice to finally put a face to the name. What happened back there? Why did Paimon start sneezing all of a sudden? Hmm. Have you ever heard of hay fever? To put it simply, when inhaled, certain pollens can trigger abnormal physical reactions. Uh, but Paimon has seen these kinds of flowers before and nothing weird happened then. Well, we're all different. The factors that can trigger a reaction to certain stimuli vary by person. In isolation, the effects of certain pollens may seem minimal, but inhaling various types at once can trigger a more overt reaction. But there's no need to worry. Pollen allergies can be effectively mitigated with the use of medication. Oh, well, that's good. Traveler, Paimon, there you are. Is everything all right? I left in such a hurry, I forgot to warn you about all the pollen in the air. Emily? Ah, what a coincidence. Looks like my worry was misplaced then. The Traveler and Paimon are in good hands. It was nothing, really. We happened to run into each other shortly after my arrival, and I offered them a bit of help, that's all. I'm more curious as to why you thought the Traveler and Paimon were in danger. Allergies are highly unpredictable. If you were concerned the pollen might trigger a reaction, that must mean something similar has happened in the past. Remember the first time we met? You fainted after inhaling Spirit Borneal. The Spirit Borneal didn't affect Paimon at all, and now she's the one suffering! It makes no sense! It's not really something you can make sense out of, Paimon. There are all kinds of allergies out there, caused by a variety of different factors. Some people are even allergic to almonds. It's not something you can generalize. Exactly. I even encountered a case in Fontaine where someone had an allergic reaction to soba noodles their family brought back from Inazuma. Whoa. Good thing Paimon isn't allergic to anything delicious. Hmm. In a manner of speaking, although you could say the patients I deal with are rather unusual. In addition to medicine, Emily is also very knowledgeable about botany. She's taught me a lot about the native flora around Fontaine. And that's where my expertise ends, I'm afraid. When it comes to breadth of knowledge, Tainari certainly comes out on top. A flower expert? Oh, Paimon's got it! You must be the expert Tainari mentioned, the one in charge of the exhibition! Uh, wrong again, I'm afraid. Well, I did come for the exhibition, but only to inquire about the Auguste variety. I'm not involved in any official capacity. Oh, Paimon was sure she got it right this time. It's a kind of flower that was once popular in Fontaine. The perfume made from it also bears the same name, Auguste. Auguste, huh? That's not a name you hear often nowadays. In an ancient language, the word is said to mean sacred or noble. It's sometimes used as a name for people as well. Ah, that reminds me. Are you familiar with a historical event in Fontaine known as Perfume Mania? Perfume Mania was an event that occurred in Fontaine nearly 20 years ago. It all started when several merchants released their own lines of high-end, expensive perfumes, marketing them as must-have luxury products, the very symbol of elegance itself. No one anticipated the absolute frenzy this would create on the market, causing the price of perfumes to skyrocket. The demand was twofold. What some saw as a status symbol, most saw as a money-making opportunity. You could take advantage of the soaring price by hoarding them and reselling at even higher margins. The value of these products became so inflated, regular bottles of perfume were even going for hundreds of thousands of mora. This resulted in countless disputes and scams. But at the end of the day, perfume is just perfume. The market value greatly exceeded the intrinsic worth of the product, creating an economic bubble that was never going to last. Luckily, the Palais Mermonia recognized the danger and intervened before the craze could truly spread. Many profiteers and scammers were thrown in jail as a result. In the end, 
only a few wealthy families were affected when the bubble popped. What does all this have to do with that goose you mentioned earlier? Well, during the craze, the most popular perfume was none other than a goose. The demand far exceeded the supply, to the point where it once sold for 10 million mora a bottle. 10 million? Then what about now? After the mania ended, most perfumes returned to a normal price. Auguste was the only exception. Its namesake, the flower used to create it, went extinct. As a result, no new bottles of Auguste have been made and the value of the perfume remains exceedingly high. Indeed, the Auguste flower was not a natural variety, you see. It was specially cultivated for use in perfume making. When the bubble popped, all the flower beds used for its cultivation were destroyed in a fire. The variety has never been seen since. But didn't you say you came to the exhibition to look for it? Ah, yes. I came to investigate a certain rumor that the Auguste flower has reappeared in Sumeru. It's causing quite the stir in the Fontaine perfume market. Traveler, we should help Emily look for it! I have to agree. Emily wrote me to ask if I could look into the rumor, but the forest rangers haven't received any reports of new plant species recently. Even if I can locate the flower, I'm afraid you'll be disappointed, Paimon. I don't have any Grand Mora making endeavors planned. Ah! Divine, noble, one of a kind. All beautiful sentiments, to be sure. But to me, they overshadow the very essence of the product. When it comes to perfume, I want people to forget the price and the prestige and focus on the beauty of the fragrance itself. Wow, so noble. Of course, there's also a more practical reason. In recent years, low-grade counterfeit versions of Auguste have been popping up on the Fontaine perfume market. Every so often, someone will claim to have recreated the unique scent of Auguste, and the rumor mill will start comparing the counterfeits to my own work. Okay, that's more like the reason Paimon had in mind. Ever since that rumor started, three new perfumes claiming to be made from the Auguste flower have appeared on the market. If I can dispel the fanaticism surrounding Auguste, even just by proving the rumor to be false, Fontaine's perfume market can finally start to get back to normal. Then I'll be free from all the stories and added meaning and just focus on making what I like. That makes sense. Oh, I would of course be grateful for your help, but I wouldn't want to trouble you. Well, you said it yourself. We're both travelers from abroad, so it's only right that we help each other out. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Then you have my thanks. Based on the information I have so far, it's unclear if the rumor is true. Mr. Edgar also thinks it's too early to say, but you could always go talk to him. He was there all those years ago, after all. Maybe he'll know something. Huh. I was just about to pay him a visit at the hotel. Edgar? Who's that? The person you've been trying to guess this whole time. The flower expert in charge of the exhibition. He's also the most respected and experienced perfumer in the area. Back when he was still working in Fontaine, Auguste was his creation. I should also mention, he was my teacher, the one who taught me the basics of perfumery when I apprenticed in Sumeru. So, this guy was a famous perfumer in Fontaine, but then he came to Sumeru to teach people from Fontaine? It sounds confusing. Oh, look at all the flowers! Apparently, the exhibitor paid a large sum to rent out the hotel and surrounding buildings. They're being used as temporary storage facilities and lodging for exhibition personnel. Yeah, what if guests come early? They won't have anywhere to stay! Also, renting out this big of a hotel, how are they going to make that mora back?
<laughs> it's been so long. I almost didn't recognize you, Edgar. Well, you and your brother haven't changed a bit. Oh, yeah. Look, all this catching up is nice and all, but let's get down to business. We need to talk about Kyria. Is he... Hold on. We have guests. It's nice to see you again, Master. Emily? Is that you? <laughs> oh, it's been years. Look at you. You're all grown up. I've heard you've become quite the famous perfumer in Fontaine. It would seem the student has surpassed the master. Oh, well, it's all thanks to your mentorship. Ah, hardly, hardly. I taught you the basics. Hearing you call me master, well, I'm not sure I'm deserving of that title. I've taught many students here in Sumeru over the years, but I've yet to see one turn out quite as accomplished as you. You're the only one who can take credit for that success. And who are these two? I don't recall you mentioning them in your letter. Ah, they're my new friends, the Traveler and Paimon. Emily's friends. Well then, the pleasure is all mine. And these two gentlemen? Are they friends of yours, Master? <laughs> of course! We're perfume merchants from Fontaine. I'm Oud, and this here is my younger brother, Blaze. Edgar and the two of us are old friends. <laughs> Isn't that right, gentlemen? <laughs> uh, yes. Merchant brothers? You must be here to look for the August flower, then. Huh? <laughs> well, what respectable perfume merchant hasn't heard of a goose? Anyone in the business would be interested in the rumors. I'm guessing you're here for the same reason, Emily. We were just about to get into it, so you three might as well join in. I commissioned a few Eremites to do some scouting for me. They searched all over Sumeru, but there were no sightings of the August flower. That being said, there are people in Port Ormos who claim to have smelled a unique fragrance on the streets. Definitely floral, but still distinct. Some of them were merchants who lived in Fontaine twenty years ago. According to them, the fragrance smelled exactly like the Auguste they remember from back then. A one-of-a-kind, divine, and noble scent. Maybe someone around here just happens to have a bottle of Auguste from back then. No, I don't think so. I doubt that's the case. Even if someone had a bottle that was never opened, the fragrance of the perfume would have changed over time. Very few perfumes can go decades without a change in scent. Auguste is even more prone to that kind of shift. Only a few bottles still exist in Fontaine, and their scent would have completely degraded by now. Although, could there be a flower out there with a similar fragrance? Or an accord with the same base notes? Impossible! If a goose were that easy to replicate, it would never have sold for such a high price all those years ago. The goose flower is back. It has to be. Technically speaking, the scent wouldn't be impossible to imitate. Well, let's table that question for now. Edgar, did any of those people mention where the scent was coming from? No. By the time they realized they had smelled something, the scent was already gone. If I hadn't asked about it, they probably wouldn't have given the experience a second thought. Compared to things we see and hear, smells can be much easier to overlook. Hmm, it almost sounds like someone wearing the Auguste fragrance past them on the street. Wait, are you saying... <laughs> Just thinking out loud! <laughs> don't pay me any mind. We don't have much to go off of right now, but we can't rule out that possibility. I'll send some more people to investigate. You all traveled so far to be here. Why don't you rest in the hotel for a bit? Uh, Oud, Blaze, this is the key to your room. Ooh, 
you've got the keys to the rooms? Do we get free lodging too? Ah, my apologies. All the rooms in the hotel are accounted for, I'm afraid. Most are being used for storage ahead of the exhibition, you see. I managed to tidy up one of the rooms for these two at the last minute, but by the time Emily wrote to me, there was no more space left for her to stay. Oh, and we just showed up out of the blue. Guess that means there's definitely no space for us. Uh, I should have been more considerate. Here I am with an entire hotel at my disposal and no place to offer you to stay, even after you made the trip all the way to Sumeru. Don't worry, Master. I can sleep on the boat tonight. Or I could even camp in the wild. It would give me the opportunity to collect some plant specimens while I'm here in Sumeru. Ah, even better. Although, would it be possible for me to leave some of my luggage here? It would be rather cumbersome to take it camping. It shouldn't take up too much space. Well... Uh, about that. <laughs> of course, no trouble at all. My brother and I will keep an eye on them for you, uh, as long as you don't mind, mademoiselle. All right, then. Uh, Oud, why don't you take Emily inside and find a suitable place for her luggage? I'll prepare some refreshments and join you in a bit. Whoa, the smell of flowers is so strong! Didn't Edgar say he tidied up around here? There's still so many flowers! Pilot took a peek through the window earlier and his house was packed with flowers. Looks like this exhibition is gonna be huge! No, that's a florist thing. We work closely with the essential oils of various plants, but to maintain a sharp sense of smell, most perfumers prefer to keep their homes free of strong odors. Oh! Guess there's just too much to store for the exhibition, then. Oh, this room seems to be a connected suite, and my brother will be staying on the other side of the suite. Blaze, while you're out, why don't you bring our luggage over as well? Hmm, 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 hmm. da Hmm. Blaze! Oh, uh, ah, yes, of course. All right, then. Uh, where can we find your luggage, mademoiselle? Blaze will go fetch it for you. It's still at the port. In addition to some daily necessities, there's also a case of amber wine that I brought back from Fontaine. Could I trouble you to bring that back as well? It would be the perfect way to repay you for your hospitality. <laughs> How generous. I should thank you on my brother's behalf. You've stumbled upon his weakness. He's aloof about most things, but alcohol is his one true love. Is that so? Mr. Ood, Mr. Blaze, thanks for... Hey! What are you doing? That's Master's voice. Edgar! Master! Hey, Edgar! Are you alright? Can you hear me? <sighs> Who did this? Kyria, August. Kyria. Hey, Edgar. Edgar. No, don't shake him. He's injured. Just leave him to me. You two can. Oh, thank you. Skin is flushed, 
pupils are dilated. <sighs> but he's still breathing. strange smell around here. Is it coming from this bottle? Oh, really? You think so? Whoever did this was hiding in the flowers before they attacked Edgar? Hmm... True. I checked. It doesn't look like anyone passed through here. Oh, but that's impossible. It's not like that kid can just grow some wings and fly away. Oh, uh, the culprit, I mean. <laughs> it's not like the culprit could have just disappeared into thin air. The most important thing we can do now is focus our efforts on treating Master. Can you help me move him inside? So, how's he doing? When I administered emergency treatment, I discovered a residue in his nose and mouth. Master was most likely forced to ingest a certain liquid. He's still unconscious and inducing vomiting could obstruct his airways. We'll have to look into other clues for now. Ah, yes. The scent is the same, but the chemical composition is still unclear. We'll have to do further tests to determine if it's the same liquid and how toxic it is to the human body. But first, I do believe there are two people who could shed some light on the situation. Mr. Sylvain, Mr. Lucian. Wait, you know... Hey! <clears throat> Were you talking to us, mademoiselle? I'm afraid we'd never heard of those names before. <laughs> hmm. Before arriving in Sumeru, I asked a friend from the Special Patrol to look into the creators of a ghost. There were four people in total. The perfumer, Edgar, the one thrust into the limelight, and three others. A researcher from Sumeru responsible for cultivating the Auguste flower, and two merchant brothers responsible for promoting the product on the market. The two brothers capitalized on the mythos surrounding Auguste. Their actions lured in numerous speculators and profiteers, inflating the price of Auguste even further. In the end, they were sent to the Fortress of Meripede for falsifying their accounts and destabilizing the market. If you do the math, they should be out of prison by now. Huh. And what does that have to do with us? There are countless merchant families in Fontaine. Uh, you gonna accuse them of being criminals too? Every time your brother called you Blaze, it took you several seconds to respond. But when I called you Lucian just now, the name registered immediately. I... <laughs> Ah, oh, Miss Emily, out of respect for your position as a famous perfumer in Fontaine, I'm inclined to believe that was simply a poor attempt at humor. You have a bright future ahead of you. You wouldn't want to develop a reputation as someone who throws around false accusations, especially among merchant circles. Hmm. You claim to be regular perfume merchants, and yet, when I brought up amber wine, you took it to be alcohol. <laughs> What? Amber wine is a perfume I created several years ago. It wasn't particularly renowned, but I'm certain any respectable perfume merchant in Fontaine would know of it. Unless, until recently, they were living somewhere completely cut off from the perfume world. Hmm, somewhere like the Fortress of Meripede, perhaps? Emily, you little... 
<laughs> don't misunderstand, Mr. Sylvain. I don't bring this up to criticize you. No matter what happened all those years ago, the court has already passed its judgment. But Master's life is in danger. We need to learn whatever we can about the person who has done this. If Master's attack had something to do with a goose, I would imagine the two of you might also be in danger. So I'd like to trouble you for some information, if I may. Tell me about Kyria. <sighs> Fine. As you wish. S Sylvain! Lucian, if this will help us find Kyria, then it will be all worth it. Besides, we've already told most of the stuff to the Maison Orderly, anyway. You were right, Miss Emily. There were four of us at the beginning. Myself, Lucian, Edgar, and the researcher from Sumeru in charge of flower cultivation, Vijava. Sometime down the road, the Mara Chaussee Phantom came knocking, saddled us with a list of accusations, and started looking into our books. Oh, they did their meddling, and my brother Edgar and I were forced to serve time in the fortress as a result. Sounds like he's still upset about that. Wait, then how did Edgar end up in Sumeru? Master was convicted as an accomplice, so he only had to serve a few years. He decided to move to Sumeru so that he could put those events behind him. Still, Master was depressed for a long time after that. He stopped making new perfumes and focused on introducing students to the craft instead. That's how I met him. My parents had to relocate to Sumeru for work when I was a child, so I had the chance to study under him for a little while. But we can talk about that some other time. I want to hear more about this researcher, Vijava. Like us, Vijava was also staring down an investigation from the Mara Chaussee Phantom. But before the Phantom showed up at her door, she set all the flower beds on fire, along with much of the Mora we managed to earn. All the august flowers, everything we worked to create, was reduced to nothing but a pile of ash. What? Destroying all that evidence, wouldn't that make things worse for her? It didn't matter at that point, because she died in the fire as well. What? <sighs> Sounds like you did an investigation of your own. Why even ask us if you knew all of this already? The name wasn't mentioned in any of the files I reviewed either. But you two seem quite familiar with him. Uh, Kyria was Vijava's younger brother. He was just a clueless kid back then. Somewhere in his teens, I think. He helped his sister with her work sometimes, but that was pretty much it. He didn't have any idea what we were doing. Vijava kept him close most of the time. The three of us were probably the only ones who even knew she had a brother. After our operation was compromised, he disappeared. There were no signs of him until recently, when people started saying the Auguste Flower had reappeared in Sumeru. So you think Kyria took something with him back then? Something that allowed him to reproduce the Auguste Flower? <sighs> Vijava doted on the kid like you wouldn't believe. She even told us to give her cut to her brother if anything happened to her. If she left something behind before she died, believe me, Kiri is the one that has it. And judging by the liquid in that bottle, the Auguste flower wasn't the only thing he reproduced. He managed to replicate the perfume itself. So the liquid Edgar was forced to ingest really was Auguste. Wait, does that mean Auguste is poison? <clears throat> poison? No, no. Of course not. No perfume is meant to be ingested. Even small amounts can be dangerous, let alone ingesting a whole bottle at once. If Auguste could be considered a poison, we wouldn't have even sold half a bottle back then. Edgar fell unconscious because Kyria forced him to drink perfume. It just happened to be a ghost. Ah, 
<laughs> he probably thought we had something to do with his sister's death. But to tell you the truth, I have no idea why she did all that. We're not looking for Kyria because we have it out for him. We just wanted to see how he was doing. And, if possible, work together to bring back a ghost. We only went to prison for a bit of fraud and market manipulation. It had nothing to do with the product itself. As long as we keep things honest this time around, bringing the product back to market would almost be like honoring his sister's memory. So that's why you never mentioned Kyria during your interrogation? Yes, exactly. We were just looking out for the kid. Anyway, that's all we know. If you're looking for information on what's in a goose, or what to do if you ingest it, there are only two people to ask. Edgar or Kyria himself. Well... At least we're able to say for certain that the substance Edgar ingested was, in fact, a goose. That gives us a direction for further testing. <sighs> well, then, I'd say that was a very enlightening discussion. Ah, well, glad to hear it. Lucian, let's head back to the room and rest a bit. Mm. With everything that's happened, there are things that need reconsidering. Yes, of course. Hmm. Ah, oh, you think so too? Hmm. That does seem to be the case. Pity we don't have more evidence. But based on Sylvain's tone of voice just now, I suspect further questioning will only result in more made-up answers. The way you exposed them like that? Just based on a hunch? That was genius! Oh, right! Earlier you said you were only sort of a doctor, and that your patients were... unusual. Oh, yes. That's because most of the patients I encounter are already dead. So you're a forensic doctor? Close. I'm actually a forensic cleaner. Once the forensic team and the Mara Chasse Phantom are done collecting evidence from the scene, I'm in charge of clearing away the final traces my patients leave on the world. In fact, with just a small alteration to the formula, the same tincture used as the base of perfume can also be made into a cleaning agent. Basically, there are two sides to forensics. Those who collect evidence to expose the truth, and those who clean up the smells, bloodstains, and other substances left behind at the scene. I've learned a lot in my line of work, and I've witnessed a lot of death. But this time, we may still save the patient. Actually, Traveler, could I trouble you to report back to Tainari and the officers at Port Ormos? We should update them on the situation. I'll stay here and continue to look after Master. Now that we have a sample of Auguste, I'm hoping further analysis won't be too difficult. Whoa, why the rush? Did something happen? What? Edgar was attacked. He's the most famous perfumer in the region. Someone who's helped countless people around Port Ormos. How could this happen? Sheriff, have you received any reports of a suspicious individual fleeing through the bazaar? No, but we've got eyes all over the area. I'm sure someone's seen Kyria. I'll start gathering my forces. We won't let him get away. What about you, Tainari? Do you have a plan? Hmm... I'm sure the Sheriff can handle things over at the scene, and I doubt Emily needs my help looking after Mr. Edgar. Uh... but she said she's not a real doctor. Then she was far too modest. She may not be a doctor by trade, but she has a deeper understanding of human anatomy and pharmacology than most scholars from the Amor to Darshan. Not to mention the fact that Mr. Edgar's condition is related to perfume. Emily is certainly in the best position to help him. As for me, I'll head to the Academia and see what I can learn about Vijava and Kyria. Oh, that's right! Vijava was supposed to be a scholar from Sumeru. Do you recognize the name? 
From Emily's letter, certainly, but that was the first time I'd heard of it. The academia produces a lot of scholars, and there are plenty of graduates who choose to pursue a career outside their darshan. I didn't have time to look into it earlier, but now it seems like Vijava's past could be critical to getting to the bottom of what happened to Mr. Edgar. I have friends in Sumeru City that can help me investigate. With any luck, we'll have news to share by tomorrow. I'll leave you and Emily to watch over things here in Port Ormos. Well, it's been a day. Wonder if Tainari's discovered anything. But things weren't looking good with Emily's master yesterday. We should check on things at the hotel first. No longer in critical condition, thankfully. He's still very weak, but with a bit more rest, he should regain consciousness soon. My chemical analysis of a goose also went smoothly, although it certainly raised some questions. Mm hmm I was able to identify the components that give the substance its fragrance, but I also noticed an abnormal trace of elemental energy in the sample. Elemental energy? Hmm, hard to say. It was such a minute amount, proportionally speaking, like mixing a single drop of perfume into the ocean. I had to use one of the newest tests developed in recent years to even detect the traces present in the sample. Unless you were abnormally sensitive to elemental energy, I doubt it would have any effect, even if you use the product every day for 10 years. As for whether Master's condition was caused by the elemental energy present in the sample or some other component of the perfume, it's still too early to say. Oh, that reminds Paimon. Did Tainari come and find you? Maybe we could ask him to take a look. Hmm. I received a message from him last night, but I haven't heard anything since. The message said he was looking into some information at the academia. Oh, Paimon thought he might have stopped by to see you first. Um, excuse me? Is Miss Emily here? Perfect! Familiar faces! Traveler, Paimon, you're here too! Kale? Ah, oh, of course. Hainari's apprentice. He's mentioned you many times. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. And please, no need for formalities. Emily is just fine. Oh, uh, uh okay. Nice to meet you too, Miss... Uh... <laughs> Emily? Did Tainari send you here, Kale? Yep. Master and the others went through decades worth of records last night and still haven't had a chance to rest. I'm fast on my feet, so it only made sense for me to come and give you an update. Anyway, based on what they've reviewed so far, they believe there's no indication that a researcher by the name of Vijava ever passed through the academia. Master considered that possibility as well, but the name wasn't the only dead end. Master tried to track down people with a similar research direction or background, but also couldn't find a match. How is that possible? It's starting to seem very likely. If we want to figure out her true identity, I'm afraid another conversation with those two merchants might be our only... Hey! Lucian! It's Sylvain! Wait, you don't think Kirio came back, do you? That seems impossible. If someone came in or out of the hotel just now, we would have seen them. It's locked? There's no one here. Lucian! Lucian! That's Sylvain's voice! Hurry, let's check next door!
Lucian, Lucian, C come on, wake up. <gasps> Emily, Emily, my brother, he's going to be okay, right? He he's, he's just unconscious. Like what happened to Edgar? I'm sorry, Mr. Sylvain, but we were too late this time. No, no, that's not... that's not possible! Traveler, Kale, Mr. Sylvain has gone through a huge shock. He needs some space to calm down. Could one of you take him next door? It's not good for him to look at his brother's body like this. Uh, of course. Leave it to me. Thank you both. Mr. Sylvain, let's get you up. Here, take my hand. Nice and slow. <laughs> we'll take things from here. Just focus on getting some rest. Here, this way. <laughs> Poor guy. He's like a shell of his former self. He may have made some bad decisions in life, but right now, Paimon can't help but feel sorry for him. Good person or bad, the death of a loved one is equally painful. All the moments he shared with his brother, every hardship and triumph they endured together, are now memories he has to carry alone. If Kyria really was behind this, then... What exactly did he do to Lucian? Lucian can no longer speak, but the traces left behind by his death most certainly can. Traveler, I've got things covered here at the scene. I'll leave you to contact the sheriff. Who would have thought? Yesterday's case is still up in the air, and now this happens. Miss Emily, I heard you're an experienced forensic doctor. Have you been able to discover anything? Oh, I'm not actually a forensic doctor. I just happen to have some relevant knowledge. I did take a look, though. Judging by the temperature and rigidity of the body, it appears the time of death was sometime last night. I'd have to do a more thorough investigation to find out more. Then, would you mind helping us investigate? Before he left, Tainari said we could trust your judgment if something like this were to happen. Of course, I appreciate your trust. Many of the traces left behind at the scene will fade with time, so the sooner we investigate, the better. We'll help too. We don't know much about dead bodies, but you can leave the other clues to us. Lucian, 
Why? I'm so sorry for your loss. And the windows are shut tight, too! Seems like the only way to get in would have been through Sylvain's room. Well, looks like we've investigated as much as we can. Let's go report back to Emily and Shiam! So, did you find anything? Paimon can show you! Here, it'd be something like this! But, entering through the room next door without alerting Sylvain... Wait, you don't think Sylvain could have been the one who... No, his reaction to the loss of his brother seemed genuine, and he doesn't have a motive. Then, what could have happened last night? I know Sylvain is still in shock, but he's our only available witness. <sighs> we have to take his statement. I agree. Also, I've made some new discoveries, so we might as well head next door and go through everything together. Mr. Sylvain, I need you to tell me everything you and your brother did since yesterday afternoon. Did you see or hear anything strange? <sighs> After Kyria attacked Edgar, my brother and I were incredibly careful. We returned to our rooms and decided to lock all the doors leading to the hallway. The only door we kept unlocked was the one connecting our rooms. That way, if we heard any commotion coming from the other room, we could help each other. But I didn't hear any sort of commotion last night. Not a single noise! I woke up this morning, opened the door, and... Lucian... Lucian was... So, no movement from the room next door. No forced entry via Sylvain's room. No signs of a struggle at the scene. And no external injury on Lucian's body. What kind of cause of death are we dealing with here? I did notice a few things about the body. Lucian's pupils were dilated and his skin was flushed. Very similar to Master's symptoms after the attack yesterday. There weren't any traces of liquid in his mouth or nose, so it's unlikely he was forced to ingest anything. The more plausible explanation is that he inhaled a substance without knowing it. And I'd say that substance was likely a goose. A goose? No, no that's not possible. In inhaling, a goose won't kill you. And anyway, it, it would have been for just one night. No, that, that's not what I meant. Emily, you ran your tests, didn't you? Go on. Tell everyone whether you found any poison. No. I didn't find any common toxins. <laughs> See? A ghost is harmless. The market response proved that years ago. 
That may be true for most people, but not for everyone. Master! Edgar? You're up and about already? <coughs> Thanks to Emily. I'm out of the woods for now. Sylvain, no matter how hard you may try to hide it, the truth will always come to light. Edgar! Even if we could keep it a secret for another ten or twenty years, do you think Kyria would just let us be? No. He would never give up. Not if he's doing all of this for Yelena. <sighs> That's Vijava's real name. Yelena wasn't a scholar from Sumeru. She was an exiled Fatus from Snezhnaya. A Fatus? The Fatui. <gasps> well, th that means the elemental energy present Nagust was... Ah, so you've already detected it. <sighs> well, Sylvain, looks like this... Truly no reason to hide things now. No. Oh. The August Flower was created with the mutative and distorting power of a delusion. A... Uh, a delusion? The Fatui, delusions... I never would have thought a goose was hiding this many secrets. Born of a delusion, August contained distorted elemental energy. A prolonged exposure over many years could have a harmful effect on the body. <laughs> That's enough, Edgar. I'll take it from here. At first, Yelena wanted to keep refining the perfume and the flower, but no one knew how long the perfume mania was going to last back then. It didn't have any effect on ordinary people anyway. Every day we postpone going to market was another day of lost earning potential. So you decided poisoning people was worth the risk? Listen, it's not like it was good for business. But all that talk about a goose being harmful over time... Yelena was just speculating. The impact was practically negligible. Unless you were particularly sensitive to elemental energy or had an entire bottle shoved down your throat like Edgar, you could use the product for decades and be completely fine. It may be true there are no records of a goose poisoning in Fontaine, but even if no one was acutely poisoned, willfully bringing a product to market despite explicit knowledge of its harmful effects is still a serious crime. <laughs> That explains why you were so intent on keeping Yelena and Kyria's involvement a secret all this time, despite readily confessing to all your financial crimes. The Fatui, delusions, a goose. If the Marashase Phantom discovered the connection between the three, there would have been enough evidence to send you to the Fortress of Meripede for life. Ha! If I'd known coming to Sumeru would put a target on my back, I would have been more than happy to stay there. <laughs> At least that way, Lucian would still be alive. <sighs> oh, these years without any sign of Kyria, and he pops up out of nowhere the minute my brother and I get out of prison? It couldn't be any clearer who the kid's after. A goose was harmless before. The fact that it's killing people all of a sudden must be his doing as well. So there's bad blood between you. What about Yelena's death? Was that a cover-up too? A way to destroy evidence? I'll admit, we thought about it at one point. We took care to disguise the products circulating on the market, and no one was questioning Yelena's fake identity. But... If the Mara Chaussé Phantom decided to look into the flower beds, it would have been the end. Yelena's ties to the Fatui, the role of the delusion, 
everything would have been exposed. Before we could even put our plan in motion, Yelena beat us to it. She burned all her flower beds and threw herself into the fire as well. But... but if her goal was to destroy evidence, there would have been no reason to do that to herself. Yeah, she could have just burned the flower beds and fled with her brother. I thought about it for a long time, but it wasn't until just now that I finally understood her reasoning. Everything she did, it was for her brother, Kyria. <sighs> One of the reasons they defected from the Fatui was the deterioration of Yelena's body due to her excessive use of a delusion. She didn't want her brother to follow in her footsteps after her death. After arriving in Fontaine, Yelena continued using the delusion to cultivate the Auguste flower, weakening her body even further. There were times when she couldn't even walk. So she couldn't flee with her brother because she was afraid of holding him back. If her true identity was exposed, she and her brother would face pressure from both Snezhnaya and Fontaine. The Auguste flower and Yelena's own corroded body both bore the mark of a delusion. There would have been no way to avoid suspicion. So, in the end, she burnt it all to ash, including herself. With all the evidence erased, Kyria was free to take the Mora and run. So the wealth you earned from Auguste, it wasn't destroyed in the fire. Yelena gave it to her brother? Most likely. Before Yelena died, she said if anything happened to her, she was going to leave everything to her brother. We just didn't realize she meant our cut as well. That's why Lucian and I were searching for Kyria, to take back our Mora and the Auguste flower. We just didn't realize Kyria was baiting us the whole time. It was all a trap. <laughs> but why is Kyria out for revenge anyway? Doesn't he know about Yelena's decision to sacrifice herself? I don't think he knew his sister was nearing death. Yelena always wore heavy makeup around him to conceal her deteriorating appearance. She kept herself busy with work to keep out of sight. That way her brother wouldn't notice how she could barely walk. Then all we'll need to do is tell Kyria what really happened and then he'll give up on his revenge. I'm not so sure. Even if he knew the truth, he'd still find someone to blame. He might think Yelena was forced into using a delusion to cultivate a ghost, or something like that. It's hard to pull yourself out of that kind of hatred, especially when you've been living in that headspace for so many years. Very true. Even if Yelena's death was her own choice, I wouldn't call myself innocent either. <laughs> Edgar! What are you talking about? Think about it, Sylvain. If we hadn't been in such a hurry to capitalize on the perfume mania all those years ago, do you think Yelena would have elected to take those risks? If we hadn't been so blinded by greed, so insistent on increasing the scale of the flower cultivation, do you think Yelena's health would have deteriorated as fast as it did? If we hadn't invited the Mara Chausse Phantom to our doorstep by breaking the law at every turn, Yelena could have survived. <laughs> she knew her limits. She knew her days were numbered. Maybe it was for her brother, but she was in it for the Mora just as much as us. We were just trying to earn a bit of Mora. And what, we deserve to die for that? Target me for being the mastermind, sure. But what about Lucian? He was just following my orders. Lucian's crime, was it really so extreme that he had to pay for it with his life? <sighs> 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 
the only person that can answer that question is a judge. <laughs> Fine. I've said my piece anyway. Drag me back to Fontaine to stand trial. I don't care. <sighs> Three people from Fontaine, one from Snezhnaya, and a crime committed in Port Ormos. What a headache. Well, we can only wait until the Academia sends someone to deal with it. I'm guessing we'll have to contact Fontaine as well. In any case, we won't really know anything until tomorrow. <sighs> with the exhibition, we don't even have space in Port Ormos to detain anyone. Such a headache. Hmm. The hotel could suffice. You could station a few officers to keep an eye on Sylvain and myself. Although with Sylvain's mental state and my physical one, I don't think you need to worry about a jailbreak. Mr. Edgar, are you saying... If Sylvain is to stand trial, then I deserve the same fate. A crime is a crime, accomplice or not. I'd just like to take care of a few things before I go. Uh, say goodbye to my plants and all that. As for Sylvain, I'm sure he also has some goodbyes of his own. <sighs> Would you be willing to grant that request, Sheriff? Well, all right. I'll talk to the Academia. No matter who you were in Fontaine or what crimes you committed, the man we grew to know in Sumeru proved himself to be a good person. Your request is granted. You have my thanks, Sheriff. Happened tonight? Oh, you mean the possibility that Kyria might try to finish what he started? Yeah! All we know is that he uses a goose to poison people, but we still have no idea how to catch him in the act! If he targets Sylvain or Edgar again, we might not be able to stab him! That may be true, but what if we can take advantage of his desperation. If we take advantage of this situation and lure him in on purpose, we might finally have the chance to talk to him. Master, no. That's too dangerous. <laughs> so, that's your plan. If Kyria learns we're being taken away tomorrow, his last chance to enact his revenge would be tonight. In other words, you want to use us as bait to capture him. Capture? Not necessarily. I just want to talk. What? Are you afraid of him? Afraid? <laughs> this is my only chance to make him pay for what he did. I'm spending the rest of my life in prison anyway. I can't just sit back and let him ride off into the sunset with our fortune. There's no way I'm letting him get away with it. Not after what he did to Lucian. <laughs> As for the danger, everyone else just needs to make preparations in advance to protect us. I'll admit, it could work. We just need to spread the word that Edgar and Sylvain are leaving tomorrow. Then I'll station some of my men around the hotel. If we have your assistance as well, our chance of success would be even higher. I still have some reservations. But if you insist on carrying out this plan, I won't deny you my help. I'll also keep watch. Although I think Sylvain and myself should remain alone in our respective rooms. If Kyria noticed another person in the room, he might decide to turn back. And besides, it's possible he's already transformed Auguste into a potent toxic gas. Uh, you mean if he doesn't see a way to get his hands on the two of you, he might get so desperate that he'll just start using a goose on everybody? If that were to happen, everyone standing guard, even the innocent citizens in Port Ormos would all be in danger. That's why everyone else needs to keep to the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
you're still recovering. You need to rest. <sighs> this old pack of bones doesn't bounce back like it used to. I suppose I'll just have to leave the rest to you. All right, we can figure out a plan to keep watch later. Right now, I say we split up and start spreading that information before it's too late. Have you heard? Mr. Edgar's been detained. He's being taken away tomorrow. What? He's the one who helped craft all the fragrances for our shop. He taught my child how to make perfume. How could this happen? He hasn't been convicted yet. Let's just wait and see what the court has to say. Oh, everyone on the street is talking about the rumors. No matter where Kiri is hiding, he must have heard them by now. Let's head back to the hotel and take a break. We can see how the other preparations are going while we're at it. <laughs> 